part two of the end bill stand if you haven't seen part one take a look down below you want to watch it but basically in the first video we put all of this together we kind of tack welded it and kind of did some full welds and it just got late and i stopped now since then i finished all the welds i've also taken a flat disc here and just kind of grinded down all of the the messy welds that i had and made it look a little more presentable it's not perfect but we're not building a watch here we just want to make it look good at first glance and we're going to pull that off without any problem now the next step is to store these containers or find a way to slide these in some type of slots or mechanisms and I have a really easy cheap answer for that. I stopped at my favorite wholesale metal supply today and he had some cutoffs of angle and it was basically some one by one aluminum angle and my plans are to literally just kind of pop rivet them in, drill some one eighth holes and use some one eighth steel rivets and we'll put those in there as glides to slide it back and I want to cut those a little bit a little bit short back here because I think we have enough room to put a shelf or two in right behind those. Now at this point I think I've done all of the welding that I need to do to this little stand here. I did weld some vertical struts in here and those are going to hold some of the guides that the uh, organizers slide on. You'll see in a little bit it won't make sense right now until we put it together. Everything else from now on is basically going to be nothing more than some decent rivets and some aluminum. So we're ready to sand this down and give it a paint job. Now there's one more kind of a minor issue. The wheels we have all are swiveling casters like this and we want two of them to be stuck in one position. So it'll make it a whole lot easier if the back two wheels are stuck where they need to be. And if the front pivot, then you can move the whole table a whole lot easier without it kind of getting squirrely on you, if that makes any sense. So we're just gonna take two sets of wheels and weld them in place with the stick welder and that won't be a problem. Now it looks like we're going to burn another day here. Basically where we're going to leave this sit is the bottom half is painted and I did that so I could bolt the wheels on, flip the whole thing over, shoot it with some more paint and then hopefully by morning it'll dry. The casters look gray and chalky because I just painted them with some galvanized paint. I did take off the rust in a sandblasting cabinet and you can see that the back wheels, they don't, they don't rotate. Uh, but the front wheels do. I guess the wheels rotate. They just don't, you know, spin like a caster. But the uh, the back wheels do. Hopefully that gives us some steering because we are going to have 750 pounds on this cart and probably a little bit more by the time we weigh the cart itself and put all the drawers and stuff in it. It'll be quite heavy. But the casters can handle it. They're made to lift engines, so we should be okay. Now remember, you have to be proud of your paint job, and that right there is a spray bomb paint job that Earl Shive himself would be proud of. Now I'm basically taking some of this one by one angle iron and I'm just taking some rivets, some steel rivets, and I'm just popping one rivet in each end and that's going to allow these to lay in here quite nicely. The idea using the 2x6 tabletop is basically to pick up any imperfections in my top. Uh, I also should take out some of the vibrations as we're using the machine because the wood is relatively soft in comparison and it probably or should just kind of sink down into the wood a little bit and stay level. Of course it's treated wood and we're using stainless bolts. Galvanized and uh, treated doesn't work so well. Uh, sometimes it causes premature rust. I did pilot all of the holes with a drill press so they are nice and straight and now I'm going take my hand drill and finish drilling through the metal. Now I kind of jumped the gun and uh, already finished the table without taking some more videos, but it was pretty self-explanatory. I just bolted the planks to the tabletop. I used the stainless bolts, of course, and everything just went together relatively quickly. I slid some of my trays and the slots. That worked out fantastic. It's a good place to tuck them. Now using the trusty engine hoist bolted to my three-point, it was really a relatively painless effort. Uh, it's kind of funny because I just kind of strapped the hook to this post here and then ran the strap around and it was perfectly centered so you probably would never have that happen ever again and then I just put a spacer board to keep these from collapsing on this cheap tin it's actually pretty thick but I didn't want to bend them up with the straps everything worked out great the hoist lifted without any problems and I was able to just kind of sit it right down on the table now I'm really happy with how this stand turned out. It's extremely sturdy and it appears to be very functional. I did put a little shelf back here that I might want to sit some heavier stuff on. The stand is stable. I got to get all the grease off. It does look nasty, but they ship it like that so it doesn't rust. And I haven't been able to use it because it's been sitting over here in the corner on the pallet. It actually moves extremely easy with these casters. There really is no problem moving it around the garage floor. And that was one thing that I was after. So now it's just 
just putting all the little knickknacks and the wheels and putting all the pieces and parts together and learning how to use it. And you should be seeing this in some of my upcoming videos, which reminds me, if you like do-it-yourself type stuff and you like to build things, take a look at some of my other videos, like and subscribe. You might find something you yourself might want to build.